Hello. In this video, I will evaluate LiveShare, which is a remote programming extension for Visual Studio Code IDE. So before we begin, I just want to mention that I'm a beginner with this extension, so I apologize beforehand for missing any workflows or mistakes in this video that I make due to insufficient tutorial reading. Uh, so first, I'm going to test my uh, this, this extension on two types of applications, uh, a Python program that can be run locally and a web application that requires a local server. I just want to show mainly the workflows and the responsiveness of the extension. My intent is not to evaluate it for pair programming purposes, but rather for teaching purposes. I will also not give my opinion in this video. So if you want to see my full analysis, please visit my blog, which is linked in the description below. So let's dive right into it. All right. So the left hand side screen is the driver and the right hand side screen is the observer. So throughout this demo, we're going to see that the driver's machine is going to be controlling the code. So everything is going to be running on the driver side. So here, I'm just going to create a very quick web application here in Express. So we'll do require and Express, and we'll do a const app from Express. So next, we're going to need a port. Do const port is equal to 8080. We'll take note of the port. We might need that later on. So uh, for this application, I'm just going to create a array of users. So we'll do the first user name, Bobby, age 42. And we'll just create a few more users uh, in the same context. So we'll say next is Sarah. We'll give her an age as well. And then we'll just create one more. And we'll call this person Steve. Okay, so next we're going to create an endpoint, which is the root of our application. We're going to have our request and response objects. And we're going to just, maybe we'll just do a response.send and we'll just send the phrase hello world. Okay, so this is just to test our application, make sure it's working. And finally, we'll do an app.listen to the port. And we're going to console our, we're going to do a console.log. And we're going to say listening on and then the port. Oops, need a, need a dollar sign here. All right, so now everything uh, should be good. So let me just jump out of this folder here. So we're in the root folder. Uh, one of the things that we're going to need at this point is to install npm. I uh, sorry, install uh, Express. So you'll see that it installs here, and you'll notice that we will have the node modules installed on this computer. So this is important because you'll see that this is actually the computer that the code gets run on. So we're going to run node index.js. We're going to go to the root of the application and take a look, and there is our hello world. So let's say uh, next we want to put another endpoint, and this endpoint is user slash, and then we'll do an ID. Okay, and once again, we have a request and response object. And this time, we'll grab the ID from the query string, or sorry, from the URL. So we'll do request.body.id, which is wrong. And then we'll do response.json, and we're going to send back users, the users array, uh, and index it at UID. So the intent here is if you take a look at the, the array, I just want to send back the uh, the information on whatever ID comes in. So zero will correspond to Bobby, one corresponds to Sarah, and so on. All right, so let's run this, and we'll go to, we'll make sure that it's still running. We'll go to slash user slash zero. Um, oh, maybe I forgot the slash here. And I also forgot to save it. Okay, so let's save it, and let's run it again. Okay, so we're getting this error that says cannot read the property ID of undefined. So let's say at this point I'm stuck. And so I want to kind of connect with, uh, with my observer and uh, maybe do a pair programming here. Now, this is just one very small aspect of this application, but I think what we can do is uh, demo the workflow that we would go through here. So we're going to go through the extensions and we're going to look up LiveShare. Uh, LiveShare currently is not installed on this computer. I just wanted to show you how quick it is to install it. So you can just install it um, here. And as it's installing, I want you to see at the bottom left corner, uh, there's going to be a live share button that pops up. And, and then that's how we know that everything is installed. So there's the live share button. <clears throat> and, and if we click the live share button, uh, it is going to automatically give me an invitation link, which is actually copied to the clipboard. So I'm just going to take this link and I'm going to send it to my observer. So let's say I have the observer on the chat here and I'll just send the observer the link and over on the observer side, I'm going to grab the link. And it actually goes to a web version of this IDE, which is pretty cool. Um, but I'm just going to open up, open this up in a local, uh, application in uh, the local visual studio code. So 
uh, I could actually also interact with this uh, on the web, I believe. So you'll see that we can actually share a terminal. So I need to request the read write access for the terminal, which automatically sends the request over to the driver. Driver gives me the request and I can now focus the terminal and I can, uh, I can do whatever I want um, with it. So you'll notice that on the driver side, I'm also able to share a terminal um, and I can share the terminal uh, here. Oops, I think I pressed the wrong button, uh, but but you'll see that once we share the terminal on the other side, we'll be able to have access to that terminal. I believe I wrote uh, read only here, so I, I may have to ask for um, for write purposes again. But I can interact with the terminal, which is actually a really nice thing. Um, <clears throat> for from my hour of testing, it seems pretty good. Um, the the uh, the responsiveness here. So notice that I can uh, scroll through. I can uh, set breakpoints. And on the driver side, you can see those breakpoints being reflected. Uh, as I navigate through this application, uh, you'll also see that the cursor shows up. So uh, we can we can say, for example, okay, there's my uh, error, and we can share the server uh, with the observer as well. So let me just run this right now again, and I can go to uh, node. So you'll see that on the observer side, I can type node, and I can okay, something's not right here. Give me a second. Um, the terminal doesn't seem to be responding very well here. All right, so we'll do node and uh, index.js. All right, so now it's listening. So notice that I'm running the server from the observer side. And on the driver side, I can now share the server. So the server is running on localhost 8080. So I can say, okay, let's share localhost 8080 from my local server. And I'm going to call it, uh, let's just call it my server. All right, so now it's shared with the other side as my server. And if we go to, oops, not the chat. Uh, if we go to live share, I believe, and uh, we can go to, no, this doesn't look right. Um, yeah, here we go. All right, so we can connect to the server and I can, I can now copy the, uh, the, the server and I can actually interact directly with the server that's on the driver side. Okay, so we know that this is not running on the server side because if you take a look at the server side code, uh, it does not have any node modules or anything installed. So this is actually tunneling to the driver side and it is giving me the result, same result as what is on the driver side, which is really, really cool. Um, all right, so you'll see that also on the driver side, we can run a debug. So when we run the debug, we'll run the, oh, I may not, I, I think there was a server already running. So let me try this again. Um, let me stop the other server actually. Okay, so there was a server already running. Um, I'm gonna debug here and hopefully I'll see that it's running on port 8080. I go to debug console. Okay, so it's running on port 8080. And I'm gonna go back to the observer side and let's say the observer wants to see what's wrong. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna send this request. No, now notice this request is actually being sent to the driver side and we have a debug uh, tool that allows me to stop here and take a look at what's in the request object. I'll notice that the request object doesn't have a body. So instead, if I scroll down, it has a params. And I think that's what I was looking for. So I can come over here and I can change this. I can take body, I can turn it into params.id and I can stop the breakpoint and I can restart it. Hmm, not sure if I can restart it from here. Let's see. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened here. I should be able to restart it. Uh, let me try this one more time. So from the observer side, I should be able to click this restart. Uh, Okay, there we go. I'm um, not sure what happened last time. So it restarted the server and you see now it's it's behaving properly. So if I go to users one, now I see Sarah and so yeah, I think this is a pretty nice tool. I mean, in terms of re responsiveness, it's pretty good. Uh, now, uh, maybe we have everything fixed. I can open up a chat here uh, and we can talk to the driver. I can say, for example, your request dot body. Yeah, so request dot body is supposed to be quest.params. So you can see that on the driver side, there's a chat that pops up and you can say, oh. So I guess this would be the workflow uh, unless I'm, I'm missing something. So I, th I think this would be uh, the workflow for a typical web application uh, pair programming session. So the driver can now go back and say, oh, okay, everything is fixed. I'm going to test it on my side, make sure everything is good. And then maybe we can um, move on with other parts of this project. So the next thing I want to do is try to run a Python file uh, locally on the driver side and 
see if we can repeat the process for debugging on the server side. And now hopefully this will go a lot smoother because this is going to remove a lot of the complexity of having a having to run a local server and having to share this local server with someone remotely. And uh, okay, let's dive into this here. Okay, let me go back into the terminal and I'm going to get rid of some of these windows here. We can kill off some of these terminals. And I guess as we kill off these terminals, uh, the, the ones that are shared will also be terminated. All right, so I'm going to make a directory called Python. And let's create a file called prog.py. So I'm just going to create a, a simple Python program. And in this Python program, we'll just do a simple list, a, a two-dimensional list, one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven. Uh, five six seven and then maybe eight nine down here so you notice that on the observer side you can see exactly what i'm doing as well so you can see exactly um the the file that i'm working with as well as what i'm typing live which is pretty it's it's actually pretty efficient uh, in terms of pair programming uh, so we'll do two for loops all right so let's say i print uh the ls indexed at ij all right, so my intent is just to navigate through this list, uh, through this two-dimensional list, and to print out all of the numbers uh, in between. All right, so then I'm going to run Python 3 and run this prog.py, and I'm going to get an error. All right, so it says that, um, that we have an object uh, error, so the type int has no length property. All right, so my observer is going to come over here and say, oh, okay, uh, I can set a breakpoint here. Now, I think, let's take a look here. Um, oh, yeah, I need to request the read-write access for the terminal. All right, so I can run this uh, Python 3 and prob.py, and I can get the same result on my terminal here. And really, it's the same terminal as on the driver side. So when I hit debug here, uh, it will ask for uh, to find an extension. The problem is that the observer already has this debug extension, but the driver doesn't. So I'm going to uh, go onto the driver side and find a Python extension. Uh, I'm going to use this Python uh, IntelliSense here. So I'm going to install this. Uh, but I, I want to show you in one second that the observer actually has this installed already. So um, one of the problems I've found is that I can't remotely access the debugger. Now, this could be because I'm just missing a workflow. So notice right here, um, if I go to IntelliSense, I actually have this installed already on the, on the observer side. Um, I'm not able to access the debugger on the on the driver side. Okay, so uh, so I have this installed now. I should be able to run the debugger. So I'll run it as a Python file. Okay, so uh, you can see that there is a the debugger is here. Now I can check what i is, and I'll find that i is oh i is an integer. So I better change i to uh, to correspond to the list that it indexes. So I'm going to come over here and let's get rid of the breakpoint. And I'm going to instead do ls index at i, which is the correct code. <clears throat> I have to request this again. I believe I opened up a new terminal before. Um, so I'm going to come over here, focus the terminal. And we'll run Python again on prog. Oh, I'm in the wrong folder. Okay, so we'll run prog.py. And now you see that everything is printed out. All right, so that's basically the workflow of live share. So I think in all in all, it's pretty good. Uh, in terms of pair programming activities, it, it works really well. This is a quick demo for live share. And I'm going to test how feasible it is to help a student remotely uh, using live share as an extension. So I'm here with Jacob. So we're going to go through a quick lesson and uh, help Jacob through one of the programming problems. So let's dive right into it. So I'm looking at Jacob's computer here, uh, his IDE through live share. So I'm going to give Jacob a problem. Okay. So Jay, um, I want you to write a program that asks the user for their name, then prints out, uh, hello, and then their name. Okay. Do you think you can do that? Uh, yeah. Okay. 
So let's try that. Yeah. So what's the first thing we need to do? First thing? Yep. Hey, hey. First thing you have to do is this. Okay, so we're going to do an input for the user. That's good. Okay, so remember what we have to do for the input? Yay! Yeah, so... Okay, the input needs a quote. Or not the quote, the, the bracket. Bracket. Yes. So the bracket is going to ask the user to do something, right? So inside good, we have we have a string. And then... Also a quote. And, a yep, the yep, and then inside the quote, we're going to ask the user to give their name, right? So you just do this. Please. Name. Good. Okay, so this is their prompt. So the user is going to type in their name, and then after we take the input, and we're going to make it equal to a variable. So remember how to make a variable? That's too easy. A variable is like, you do like, uh... At the beginning of the statement. There you go. And what do I type? Uh, whatever you want the variable to be called. So since this is their name, you probably want to call it something like name. Name? Yeah, so let's do name. Good. Equals. Right? So now, whatever the person inputs, it's going to go into the name variable. Yeah. Right? Okay. So let's go to the next line. So go to the end of the line and we'll hit enter. Good. Whoops. I think we took the bracket with us. So let's, <laughs> yeah, let's put the bracket back. Okay. Bracket. Stop. There you go. Okay. Now hit enter. We'll go to the next line. Good. And then what do we do with this name variable? Name is. We want to, good. We want to print it out. All right. So we have. Print this. I forgot what you type inside, but I know what you type after. Okay. Well, what does it say in the instructions? In the instructions up here, right? Oh, hello! So you there can... you go. And then... And then you want to print out whatever their name is. Good. Perfect. Okay, so now we need to try it out, right? You want to try yeah, out... So how to try it out is you need to go to files, mm -hmm. and then find save. Okay. Then, after that, you, you type in Python. Oh, we're not we're not typing Python there. Not right there. Oops. So you type it here. Mm -hmm. So you type Python, and then three, and then you type like whatever whatever you named it like right here, mm -hmm. and then you you type Python three, like what I did is program.py, so it's down here. Anyway, you could just press tab or p tab, and then before you um before you. Before you run it, you have to make sure you saved it, or else you'll just have to do the whole thing again. Yes. So let's see. Name? Pranker. You'll say, hello, Pranker. Good job. And then, if you want, you could do it again. So. Yeah. Okay. So you want to try one more time? Yeah, so, maybe. So run it one more time and make sure it works. So, remember, don't forget to save it, or else you'll have to just do it again. Okay. Good. And now it's going to ask you for your name again. Uh -huh. Great. Looks good. It's okay. Okay. All right. That is, that's really good. I think that shows a lot of the functionalities of LiveShare. So thank you, Jacob, for helping me. Oh, you're welcome. Um.